Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to talk about a new filter coming to Melda Production. So that's M Turbo Filter. And so this will allow you to create all sorts of new and interesting filters, but actually I have an offer here for you. So Melda Production right now is looking for people who want to make filters and submit them to Melda Production to be used in M Turbo Filter. Now all you have to do is just make something interesting and submit it to them and you'll hopefully get some kind of reward for it. Uh, maybe a free copy of M Turbo Filter, maybe a free copy of another plugin, maybe a million dollars. I don't know, <laughs> you'll have to talk to them about it. But I'll leave the link down below to where you can email if you want to do that. But today what I want to do is just show you the basic uh, options you can have in uh, M Turbo Filter and also how to create a basic filter. So we have it here, this is M Turbo Filter. So this is the standalone version. You see here it has frequency, Q values, something for character, which you can adjust yourself, drive, and inside it you have two LFOs and two followers here, as well as like some saturation options as well. But here we have the algorithm, and this is where you can actually design your own special filter. But instead of doing it in this, let's use it inside M Sound Factory. So if we have this here, we have an oscillator here, with just a saw wave, nothing special. But now let's add M turbo filter, or just turbo filter in here actually. So we have the same thing, because it's a little bit large, let's pop it out. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, now the uh, filters inside uh, Melda Production have these here, so you can see a visual representation of what it's doing. So we can play this, we can move around the frequency. And it updates when you change the cue and things like that too. Ooh, way too loud. Don't turn up the cue that far. And that's actually one of the problems we have. Uh, I'll show you here. You see this algorithm. And you can click here. And it'll show you actually how to make them. This will be kind of like a, a dictionary or encyclopedia of the different functions. It shows you the syntax, which is basically just basic kind of computer programming syntax. It's very similar. Uh, you have different parameters here. And you can make your own algorithms using mathematical signs like this. And then you have even other things that will help you, like uh, set minimum and maximum values, or convert uh, frequencies into 0 and 1. So if you want to convert a frequency like uh, 70 hertz into uh, 0, 1 for the Q value, you can do that. You can see all those here. It's probably better to read that because it's going to take too long if I read every single one. Going in here, you have different ways to process things, such as the serial module, which you actually don't need to use, but uh, you can process things and put uh, filters in serial, which is very helpful. We have parallel. You can put things in parallel. You can control the level uh, in decibels. You can control the level by percentage, etc. And here we have the basic filters. So these are the filters you're going to see other places in uh, Melda production things. Here, so you, you have low pass, high pass, low pass six, etc. You have high shelves, you have band passes, you even have all passes too, which I want to work with in the future. Uh, but those you might think like, ah, I kind of want to move these faster, I want something more analog sounding. And that's what we're going to do today, and we're going to use these LP fast. And these are more suited for that type of work. So let me show you one of the differences and one of the problems that you might be having and we're going to solve today. So instead of low, uh, low pass fast, we'll just call this low pass here. Turn this up a little bit and let's play something. If we turn the cue up a little bit more, let's turn the output down a little bit. You that whoa, 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 like that when it's hitting those harmonics. We don't want that. To me, that doesn't sound that good. I can put it on constant and you'll get the same thing. But what I want to show is a way to get rid of that using kind of like an analog style trick. So let's first change this to low pass fast. Now you see, like I wrote all this out, but you can actually just put LP and it does the exact same thing. So instead of having to write out the whole thing every time, there's little shortcuts you can use like that. So we have this here and, oh, another thing I should mention is if you've done the syntax correctly, you'll see this and it says, okay, if I do something crazy like this, you'll say like unknown processor or it'll tell you what your problem is. So instead of the low pass, which we have, we want to use low pass fast. That's still not going to solve the problem. But what we can do is, if you look inside here, you can see it has various parameters for it. So if we look here, you can see the syntax. We can put uh, parentheses here and then put in the frequency, Q, 
you can add the gain, you can add the analog amount, and we can put things in the feedback here. If you don't put anything in here for this, it'll just assume the defaults, which is F, Q, uh, I think gain would just be normal, and analog at zero. So you don't actually have to put all those in. The F will be this parameter, the frequency here. The Q will be this parameter here, and the character will be C, and the drive will be D. So you can have those in there. So if I wanted to put like frequency F, this is Q, and we don't need to touch the other one, just put it in parentheses, and it'll be controlled by this. You can also use mathematical functions. So if I wanted to do frequency here, let's play this. If I do this like divided by two, now it's just half the frequency. So instead of 440, you see it's starting at 220. So that's how you can use some of the mathematical functions if you want, but we don't really need that. So I'll just leave this as it is. It's not so important. What I really want to get into is the feedback. So I would be a little bit careful with the normal ones here, using the feedback in just the low-pass filters, but the low-pass fast is actually really useful. So kind of trick that I saw uh, used was in old analog filters, they put a high-pass filter inside the feedback loop of the low-pass filter, and that kind of chops off the lower frequency so you don't get that whoop whoop sound. So let's turn that cue up again, do the exact same thing. Sounds terrible. Another thing I should mention, make sure you have the limiter on because that gets really loud. So to get rid of that, let's use the brackets here and let's put HP6 in here. If I just leave it like that, we're still gonna get the same problem and it's not gonna be good. What we want is we want a low pass six at a certain frequency and the frequency is 200. Add an ending parentheses, add an ending bracket here. So now let's hear it. <laughs> Here, when I get to that low note, you know, I'm not getting that wow wow sound. So I can even take it off if you really want to hear the difference. Copy it, delete it. Add it back in. Sounding good to me. Now, there's other things we can do here. Like maybe if I want some more drive, I can just put sat, which is our saturation module. And you can see that further in here. So I showed you the basic modules, but there's actually more than that in here. We have compressors, you have saturation modules, you have a compander, you can change the channels, uh, do things with feedback, you have a ratio here, easy shaper, which is like a, a wave shaper, normal shaper, maybe a little bit more complicated. So if you actually want to add the points in there, a little bit too much for me, but maybe you find some use for it. And you have the hysteresis. Yeah, so I have bit reduction and sample reduction. And expression, you can do mathematical stuff in there. If you're good at that. But we add the saturator in here. It has parameters there, but you can actually control a lot of it by just using a drive control here. So here. And that to me just makes it sound a little bit bassier. So let's try this inside our M sound factory and let's maybe make a analog bass sound. I'm gonna turn the frequency down. Let's use the attack module here, open it up. Let's see, the settings, I kind of like it bent down here. I actually did this before, so to show you. Set it around like 400 something for the attack. Seems good. Now move the depth up, I think maybe around like 3,000, 5,000, sounds good. And let's play it. And let's try turning the cue up. Turn the drive up. So we can do that. We can turn the cue up and down. And you see, no matter where I put the cue values, I'm not getting that whoop whoop sound when I'm getting lower. So this is kind of like an analog trick. You could also put saturation afterwards if you wanted. I don't know if I need that. But sometimes I'll create some harmonics afterwards, so maybe it's... I don't know if it's a good idea or not.
I'm not sure if that's good or not. I don't know if that improved it or not. But there's other parameters you can mess with with the saturation if you want. And of course you have <clears throat> this saturation that goes afterwards anyway. So your user can uh, adjust that as they like. So this is just a basic idea you can use. And you might be wondering, like, what's the character for? And here it doesn't do anything. But you can actually add this as a variable and put C in here someplace to change it. So I did this and I actually sent it in. So hopefully it'll be inside the uh, uh, actual finished product. But I'll let you see what I did here. So I had batch here. So I had this. So I basically did the same thing. I have the saturation. I used a few more parameters here to adjust it to my liking. But I had the LP fast, just as you saw before. I limited the frequency, which you didn't really need to do. But you see here I have the HP6 at 200. But you notice like, ah, I have a bunch of math after it and then going to saturation you're like what does this math do and this adjusts the character so if i move this up and down i can move where that high pass six or six decibel per octave high pass filter is so here it's a 200 but if i move it down it might shift it to like 100 or all the way up to 400 like this so let's play it again turn Up. So you can see as I turn the character up, I believe it's moving that down from 200 to 100, so you're hearing that you sound before, which we didn't like, and if we move it down here, you'll get less of it because it's moving that high pass filter up to around like 400. So you can do that, and depending on your project, you might want it lower or higher. And so that's something that I did with the character. So hopefully I gave you a good idea of some of the possibilities. Uh, if you want to do these and make them, uh, just send them into Melder Production. I'll leave you the email address down below. Just send them there, and uh, hopefully that'll be enough. If you have any other questions about this, something maybe I didn't explain uh, completely, leave that down below. I'll try to do more videos about this if you want that. So tell me, saying like, give me more m turbo filter uh, videos i'll try to do more finally make sure you check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com till next time